I would like to thank our illustrious <laughs> Toastmaster this evening for that beautiful introduction. <laughs> How many of you in your household, in a cupboard in your kitchen, have a jar of spice that was bought for one specific recipe, you used it once, and now the jar is in there gathering dust? <laughs> What I want to talk to you tonight is about how to add variety so that you don't get stuck in a rut like so many of us do. And I'm going to use the word spice as a mnemonic for how to go about adding that variety. S is for spice it up. Most of you think spice it up means make it hot. I'd like you to think about spice as adding flavor. And I'm actually going to use oatmeal as a way to add variety through spice. Now if you make plain oatmeal, it's not really exciting. If you add some sugar, it gets better. But if you really want to kick it up a notch, try adding some apples, some cinnamon, some maple syrup, and all of a sudden you start getting something that's really good. But if you make apple, cinnamon, maple syrup, oatmeal every day, you get in a rut. So think about how, how can you mix that up. Another great example is to add molasses, nutmeg, ginger, cinnamon, and you get a gingerbread flavored oatmeal. I would suggest that you could come up with, with the right inspiration, a different flavor of oatmeal to eat every day. And my housemate and I have been enjoying this game, and I will tell you, this morning's oatmeal contains peanut butter, chocolate chips, and fluff. <laughs> and she was in heaven. <laughs> P is prepare to fail. Just like we here at Toastmasters create a safe environment where we can get up and fall flat on our faces and then learn from that, your kitchen should be the same. If you are worried about having something come out perfectly every time, you're going to really stick to the same thing that you know how to do. My mom, growing up, had a great saying, we eat our mistakes. Now that might have been because my mom wasn't the greatest of cooks, <laughs> and it might have been because <clears throat> at 13 I took over cooking for the household, and there was a few underdone chickens. But the point is, make your kitchen a fun, safe place where if you fail, it's just a meal, and then you can try it again the next time. Sometimes your mistake is absolutely amazing. So you have to leave that door open as well. I is for inspiration. We sometimes get so stuck in a rut, we can't think of anything else to cook. Monday night's taco night, Tuesday night's meatloaf, Wednesday night spaghetti, whatever that rut is. Well, there are so many places to draw inspiration from. For example, you could look at the menu here tonight and say, oh, what sounds good? Not thinking just what am I going to order tonight, but what might, I, what might I be willing to make? There's TV. There's the internet. God forbid any of you are on Pinterest and want to want to look at food. You'll be inundated inundated with ideas. Um, sometimes it might be an overheard conversation. Somebody said, "Oh, I went somewhere last night and had this amazing thing." Keep your ears open. Keep your eyes open. You get inspiration. C is for challenge yourself. Now, I take that to an extreme. When Josh and Isaac came to dinner at the farm, I had asked Josh, you know, what have you been denying yourself that you would love to have, but because you're gluten-free, you're not eating it? And he said, cinnamon rolls. And I said, challenge accepted. <laughs> so what I did was I dug in, did a little research, played with some, some recipes that I had, and said, how can I give him the two biggest components of cinnamon rolls? And that is the warm bread fresh from the oven, and that cinnamon and sugar. How, how do you do that? 
So I combined a couple of recipes and came up with bite-sized pastries that when warm from the oven had that aroma, had the visual. I don't know if you've noticed, but Josh has an amazing poker face. And this is the end of the meal. And I had been so waiting for him to try this. <laughs> and he picks it up and he takes a bite. And he's just total poker face. Like, Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and he proclaimed, this is a Christmas miracle. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to invent necessarily new recipes and, and crack the gluten-free code, but challenge yourself. Pull that jar of spice that's in your cupboard gathering dust and figure out what else will this go with. Spices don't just go with one recipe. Spices go with a lot of things. Which leads me to E, which is for experiment. My housemate Phoebe, who actually thinks living with me is like the best because she get like we play with our food all the time. And the other night she said to me, Now, what spices go with tomato other than like Italian seasoning spices? And I said, Phoebe, we have two tomatoes on our counter. Let us find out. So we cut the, the tomatoes into small bites. And on each little bite, with a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and then I opened my spice drawers, and we just started playing. And garam masala, which is an Indian spice blend, tastes amazing on tomatoes. Some of the things, we were kind of like, yeah, we don't need to do that one again. <laughs> but we discovered a whole range of spices, and we had so much fun doing it. Play with your food, experiment, try different things. I'd like to close with a quote from Virginia Woolf, which is, if one, sorry, one cannot think well, love well, sleep well, unless one has dined well. So, remember the spice and make it interesting.